Hi, this is Chad. I uh, sent you a letter last week and had a couple minutes in the office today, so I just wanted to follow up, make sure you got that and you understood why we sent it. Uh, give me a call back when you have a couple minutes. My number is 540-999-1234. Thanks a lot. Let's talk about voicemail guys. This is something that we've talked about on mastermind calls, but I find myself working with folks one-on-one -on -one answering questions about voicemail. So what is the right voicemail to leave? When is the right time to leave it? How often do you leave it? There's many questions and, and it seems like it's something really simple, but it's cr critical to our business to get the most out of our prospecting time. We should be leaving voicemails. Um, let's first talk about the message. So I made the mistake early in my career in real estate prospecting of trying to sell my service over voicemail, which is really not effective. Um, I would start out with, you know, this is Chad from ABC Real Estate, and we have a proven repeatable system for getting home sold quickly for the top dollar, yada, yada, yada. And nobody cares about that. The point of a voicemail is to get your phone to ring back in this direction. The message you heard me leave in the beginning, I get about a 2% callback rate on that on probate. So if I, if I drop 100 voicemails, I can expect to get two qualified customers that will want to speak with me after hearing that voicemail. The reason I referenced the letter is because if they haven't read the letter, I want the voicemail to prompt them to go read that letter so they know more about me and why I'm calling. And then when they call back, it's a much warmer call. Um, I've done this wrong at least two dozen different ways. Uh, there's a lot of messages that you guys won't hear from us because they simply don't work. Uh, I remove my title. I leave a lot of curiosity in the air. So I'll go through it a little bit slower so you can kind of get, get the hang of it. So, hi, this is Chad. No title, not Chad the investor, not Chad the realtor. But, hi, this is Chad. I sent you a letter last week. I had a couple minutes at my desk. I just wanted to make sure you got that and you understood why we sent it. So the reason I'll break that that part. So I sent you a letter. I want you to go, if you haven't seen that, I want you to go think about that again. Um, ideally, they're going to go get the letter and read it. Then they'll. Wanna, the reason I say I want you to understand why we sent it, I want them to actually read the letter. So I want them to go find it and say, well, I don't understand why he sent it, and then, but that's going to create some curiosity to read it. And then I'm simply going to say, give me a call when you have just a couple of minutes and leave my phone number and that's it. No brokerage information, no investor information, no website, no details about my service, nothing. Because the only point of this is to create enough curiosity to get them to call me back and that's where I do the selling. So keep your voicemail simple. It doesn't have to be exactly, <coughs> excuse me, exactly like the one that I just, just use, used. But that's the one that's been used by hundreds of our subscribers and has been effective in, in all markets across the country. So uh, I encourage you to try to simplify your voicemail, keep it short and sweet, and leave a lot of curiosity out there. And now let's talk about frequency. So this is something you know, almost every caller, when they're first getting started, they want to know, you know, should I leave a voicemail? and how often? Um, the answer to number one is usually. You should usually leave voicemail. So we recommend at a very minimum, I mean the minimum campaign you should be running is three letters each followed by a phone call spaced a month apart. So that gives you 90 days of marketing for each list. That's the minimum. You, I, In a perfect world you would send mail and make phone calls until you've spoken to everybody on your list. But sometimes we don't have the bandwidth or the budget for that. So at a minimum, we want to market to them for three months with at least nine touches. Um, so it, your call frequency will determine if you should be leaving voicemail or when you should be leaving voicemail and the frequency that you should be leaving it. For example, one of our subscribers, you guys may have seen his case study, David Pinnell. They're calling once a day for the first seven days. They leave a voicemail on the first day. Obviously, you don't want to call every day and leave the same voicemail. Eventually, you're going to become a thorn in their side. So if you're going to be that aggressive on the phones, if you're calling every single day, just leave voicemail out of it because you know you're calling back tomorrow. You're more likely to get them to pick up tomorrow than you are to get them to call back on a voicemail. Um, we have about 50% contact rates on the phones, and we have about 2% callback rates on voicemail. 
So you're better off to make that call tomorrow and not aggravate them with yet another voicemail and a full inbox. If you're calling once a month at the absolute minimum, so if you're sending one letter and you're following up with one phone call and you're not going to make a follow-up attempt, then you absolutely should be leaving that voicemail. Hi, this is Chad. Sent you a letter last week. Had a couple minutes to follow up. I just wanted to make sure you did receive it and you understand why we sent it. Uh, please give us a call when you've got three or four minutes to talk. 540-999-1234. And it's that simple. You leave that one, and then a month later you'll send another letter, and you'll leave that same vo- the exact same voicemail again. Now, that's the two ends of the spectrum, kind of the minimum you can do and the super aggressive approach. Um, it's okay to fall anywhere in between. I would say that the most frequently I would suggest leaving a voicemail will be once every other every two weeks, like every other week if you're if you're calling. So let's say you send a letter on September 1st and you leave a voicemail. Then on September 15th, you leave a voicemail, and then on October 1st, they get your next letter and a voicemail. So that's a pretty good frequency. That's reasonable. Like three voicemails over a month. Like if if you look over four weeks, you would have left them three voicemails. That's not unreasonable. It's not going to show badly. So you you've got to look at the how aggressive your campaign is, uh, how many how many touches you have, and the frequency of your call, and kind of use your discretion. But I would say if you're calling often, leave fewer voicemails. If you're only calling a few times, always leave a voicemail. So this has been one of our Tips from the Trainer videos. Guys, there's a playlist uh, on, on a, you can find both on our blog. If you're watching this there, you'll see a category tag below that says Tips from the Trainer. You can click that. It'll take you to other Tips from the Trainer blog posts like this. If you're on YouTube, there's actually a playlist called Tips from the Trainer. You can get all of these videos right there. Um, go back to alltheleads.com. If you click the link in the description, it'll take you to the full blog post where you can get all the resources associated with these videos. Uh, If you're new to all the leads and this is one of the first things you've seen but you liked it, be sure and give us a thumbs up, hit the bell, subscribe. So when we release weekly content, we're usually putting out three or four pieces of content like this each week. Um, You'll be notified first. So this has been Tips from the Trainer, guys. Thanks so much for being here as always. Have a great day.